Okay, next hypothesis test is for a single proportion. So here's an example, 200 electronic components are tested, 32 are found effective. We think that the true failure proportion is 10%, and we want to test if this is consistent with that. So we're going to have to do appropriate non-alternative, observed value, p-value, conclusion, and then we'll do a 95% confidence interval. So first of all, the null hypothesis, H0 as always, And this time we've got p equals 0.1 because we're testing for 10%, so it's 0.1. We need to give the alternative. So that's the not equal version. It's not equal to 0.1. Where p is the true proportion of components. So I've given the null. This is what we're testing. This is the sort of status quo, what we're assuming, and we're seeing if it's significantly different. And also I've defined it for p. So the observed value of the test statistic. Now if you go to my cheat sheet. So here's a single proportion. We've got our null is p equals p0. Alternative is p is not equal to p0. Our test statistic now, one thing to note at this point, here's my test statistic as usual, here's my confidence interval. And usually before we've had a sort of relationship that the bit underneath your test statistic is the bit that appears on your right of your confidence interval. But notice in your proportions this is different. Here you've got p zeros and here you've got p hats. So we do have to take that into account. Anyway, back to the test statistic is the z value. So when you've got proportions you end up with a z value. So we're looking at the standard normal. So this curve here, if we're working out p-values, would be our standard normal. So we need to get p-hat, which is the estimated proportion, minus our hypothesized value divided by this. So let's go to MATLAB. So first of all, let's get p-hat. What's that going to equal in our case? We've got 32 out of 200. So it's going to be 32 divided by 200. So we've actually got a 16% effective rate, which seems very high compared to our 10%. Is it significantly high? We're going to test for So z is going to be equal to the top is p hat minus, we need p0. And in our question, we're asked to test the, whether it's equal to 10%, so it's 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 divided by the square root of so we do p0, 1 minus p0 over n. So p0 is 0 0.1 times by 1 minus 0 0.1 divided by n is the number of observations we have, which in this case is 200. So we've got 2.8284. So there's the value. Now, how do we get the p-value? So let's look at a diagram. To get the p-value, we get our value of z. So in our case, we've got our 2.8284. So this would be 2.8284, and this would be minus 2.8284. And we want the area that's less than the minus 2.8284 and greater than 2.8284. So we've got a standard normal. We want the area to the left of one of all the area to the right. Now the easiest one to do would be the area to the left. So we want the area to the left, the negative of our value. So we've got 2.8284. So we want a norm, CDF, minus 2.8284. We don't have to put in a mean or a variance because it's a standard norm. We get 0.0023. The thing about it, we set our minus, it's this value here, and we've got this area to the left. Fine, but we want the p value, which is this area plus this area. So we'd have to work out this area as well. 
But the nice thing is, because this is symmetric, the area we've got to the left will be equal to the area to the right. So the total shared area, which is our p-value, we just times it by 2. So we just take that value and we times it by 2. So we've got 0 0.0047. So what's our conclusion? Well, we're not given a significance level. So if you're not given a significance level, you assume 5%. So then what we do is we look at this and we compare it to the 5% level. So we say, is it less than 0 0.05? Yes, it is. So our conclusion is, so what do we do? Well, we go, we reject the null hypothesis. That's the P value. equals 0.007 is less than 0.05 and conclude that the truth portion of effective is said we've got about 16 percent. Okay so now I want to do the 95 percent confidence interval for two proportion defective components. Well if we go back here and you see that we're going to take our p hat which we've already calculated we need a z star p hat 1 minus p hat over n. So the p hat we've got n we've got we need the z star. So let's look at this diagram. So this is how we get our z stars remember. We want a z star and a minus z star such that the area between them is 0.95. No problem. So because this is all adds up to 1, the blue areas must be 1 minus 0.95, which is 0.05. Because this is metric, the size of this blue area must be the size of this blue area. So therefore that gives us that this blue area is 0.025 and this blue area is 0.025. So to get z star, we can use norm inverse and say the area to the left of z star is 0 0.95 plus 0 0.025, which is 0 0.975, and that will give us our z star. So if we go to our norm inverse, and we say 0 0.975, but don't put in a mean and a variance, it automates the standard and gives us our 1.96. So now we've got P hat, we'll do the left one, minus our 1.96 times by square root of P hat 1 minus P hat over N. So we've got the square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat divided by N was 200. So that's our lower one. And if we use plus, we get a right one. So there's our left one. There's our right one. Remember, the small one always goes on the left. So there's our confidence interval. Again, as we said before, we can look and say, how can I test this? So, again, we can use our test statistic. Our test statistic, the rule of thumb of the Z is if it's less than minus 1.96 or greater than 1.96, you're going to reject. P value, if it's less than 0 0.05, we reject, so these two agree. And finally, I can use my confidence interval to test hypothesis by saying, does this value 0.1 lie in this range? It doesn't sound reject. There you are. Bye.